Trail. And the original Oregon Trail, this entire thing, it started way back in 1843 in a little town called Independence, Missouri. And the entire reason that the Oregon Trail originated, uh, it was based on a bunch of trapping and trading trails that had been established way back in the early 1800s. It also followed a lot of the original Native American trails that uh, kind of traversed from the midsection of the United States all the way out here to the West Coast. But in 1843, the U.S. government, they decided that they wanted the westward expansion to happen at an exponential rate. So what they did, they offered free acreage to anybody that would leave the middle of North America continent and head all the way out west. If you were a single man, you were donated 320 acres of land absolutely free of charge. Would you leave home for 320 free acres of land? I know I would. Yeah, absolutely, right? If you were a married man, you got 640 acres of land. Now, a lot of the single guys back here in Missouri, they were in a big hurry to get married all of a sudden because they would double the amount of acreage just for traversing three quarters of the United States. So they did. So in 1843, roughly a thousand pioneers, they all started out and they started on the westward expansion. Now, the big problem with uh, this entire Oregon Trail is that a lot of those original pioneers, they died because they had to follow a lot of rivers, three of the main rivers that they covered, uh, the Platte River coming out of Nebraska, or through Nebraska over here, and then it branched out into something called the Snake River, and then eventually it came over here to the Oregon Territory, smack dab between Washington and Oregon, we've got the Columbia River. And a lot of these pioneers, they had to cross back and forth across that Columbia River due to the immense rapids and the immense cliffs along the Columbia River. A lot of those original thousand pioneers, they wound up drowning. It was a deadly venture. A lot of those guys did not survive. So three years later, 1846, this pair of brothers one was named Lindsay, the other one was named Jesse Applegate. They decided we need to do something to save human lives. So they branched off of the original Oregon Trail with something called the Applegate Trail. And the Applegate Trail, it split off from right here in South Pass, Wyoming, and it kind of sent, uh, sent them on a southern route all the way through Nevada, up through the corner of uh, California, and then right around the corner of a little town here in Oregon, it's called Klamath Falls, wrapped around the corner of Ashland, and then it sent it right up uh, the middle, or the uh, Rogue River Valley, right here through the middle of uh, Grants Pass, Rogue River, what is now called Interstate 5 today. Most people don't realize that we are actually living on the original Applegate Trail. That's where Interstate 5 went. It was a perfect path, so when I-5 came through back in the early 60s, they decided we're going to put it right there where those original pioneers came to Oregon. Now, the original Oregon Trail, it dead ended over here in Seaside, Oregon. And uh, a lot of the pioneers, they then migrated down to the Willamette Valley in what is now uh, Salem today. The Applegate Trail, because it went all the way up uh, where Interstate 5 is today, it kind of dead ended right there in the Willamette Valley too. So it was kind of a natural uh, ending point for the original Apple, uh, Applegate and the Oregon Trails. So because this Applegate Trail was a, uh, added back in 1846, not as many pioneers were dying, they didn't have to confront the deadly uh, Columbia River up here, so the number of pioneers, it exploded. So in 1843, again, we started out with roughly a thousand pioneers. In 1856, the number of pioneers, it jumped up quite dramatically. Now we're talking about 15,000 immigrants coming on the Oregon Trail every year. That's a huge difference, right? And then uh, in the 1860s, the entire Oregon Trail and the Applegate Trail, it kind of faded out of existence because of something called the Transcontinental Railroad. Railroad came through, they didn't need the covered wagons, the whole thing kind of dried up. But that's the basic history of the Oregon and the Applegate Trails. Now, the neat thing about uh, what the pioneers brought with them, it's kind of uh, documented right here on our toy-covered board, and we're going to talk about all these toys on the table up here, 
these pioneers, they started out in a covered wagon. Could be called a comet stove, a wagon, whatever the case may be. But on my really cool backboard right here, you see all these covered wagons being pulled by horses. Do you believe everything you see? No, please don't. Whoever painted this original painting, they didn't know what they were talking about. Most of the original pioneers, they did not use horses to pull their covered wagons. And the reason is fairly simple, the horses were too expensive. We're talking about an animal that cost about $200. And back in 1843, that was a bunch of money right there. The horses, they also needed special food. So you had to pack special grain on board your covered wagon. They also needed uh, very delicate shoes. You had to have iron shoes in order to protect their hooves. The horses were uh, very susceptible to bad water also. And there was a lot of bad alkali water along the Oregon Trail. So a lot of horses would die when they drank that bad water. Native Americans also liked to steal horses. So occasionally, the pioneers that did bring horses with their covered wagons, they would wake up in the morning, horses had been stolen in the middle of the night and then they're stranded out there on the prairie. So a horse was not the animal of choice, obviously. But the animal of choice that most of the pioneers did choose, and I know it's a musk ox, but you've got to play along with me, okay? It's called an oxen. They always had a team of oxen. They were beasts of burden. They could pull immense amount of weight. And those covered wagons, they weighed a lot. Now the reason that these guys were chosen over any other type of animal is because of the price. You go from 200 bucks for a horse, 50 bucks for an ox. It's a pretty good deal. The oxen were very important because they would eat anything out there on the trail. They would eat the prairie grass, they would also eat the sagebrush, anything that Mother Nature would provide for them, they would be able to consume. You had to have shoes on these guys too, either iron shoes or they would also make little booties out of buffalo hide anything to protect the hooves of these guys. Now the, the uh, oxen were also a good choice of an animal, especially because of the fact if times got really hard on that Oregon Trail, which they did, you could always eat your beast of burden as well. Okay? So the oxen was always the, the choice animal to be pulling one of these big heavy wagons. Now another type of animal that the original pioneers would usually bring with them on their journey was something called a cow. And we do have a cow for you to pet. My partner's going to bring it around. I think what he'll do, I think he'll start it with you, and we'll pass it down the row here, into the second row, into the back row. And when it ends up with you, sir, would you just pile it on the floor next to you? We'll pick them up at the end. Now, cows were always a good choice of an animal to bring on, uh, on your journey for a lot of reasons. What do you get from a cow? Milk. You get milk, you get meat. <laughs> Times got hard, you could eat that family that family member, right? Uh, yeah, and the cows, they would eat a lot of stuff that they found along the trail, too. They would eat the prairie grass, the sagebrush. So cows were always a good choice of an animal to bring on the journey also. Another one. Yes, sir? You say horses didn't eat the prairie grass? And... They, they usually brought big uh, bags of grain with them. They just added extra weight. Uh, yeah, a lot of the horses, they didn't like that prairie grass. They would eat the sagebrush, but after they got further along the Oregon Trail, they kind of ran out of the sagebrush. the Indians' horses graze You got me. It's a good one. Well, that's why they didn't use too many horses. Yeah, yeah they were high-maintenance type of animal, whereas the, the cows and the oxen were not. Yeah, definitely a, a different choice there. Uh, let's see, where was I? Lost my train of thought. Oh, another animal that they brought with them, the family dog. Dog was always a good choice of an animal to have on board for a number of reasons. Uh, it was a companion. You could always have your family dog with you as a, as, a, as a friend to bring on board. And it was like an early warning system, too. If there was any kind of uh, predator around, coyotes, wolves, Dog was always out there barking to alert the pioneers that danger was nearby. If there were Native Americans sneaking up on the, the wagon train in the dark, dog would always be the first line of defense also. And, again, if times got hard, which they did, you could always eat that dog, too. And I know that sounds disgusting, but if you've ever read any of the original Oregon Trail 
uh, diaries or journals. These folks were eating dogs left and right, okay? And I know that's gross, but that's a fact of life. Another type of animal they would usually bring on board were chickens. A lot of chickens on board, too. What do you get from chickens? Eggs. You get eggs, right? Mm -hmm. If you wanted to stew, you just take the chicken and put it in a stew pot also. Yeah. But a lot of the pioneers, they weren't a throwaway society like we are today. Everything that they brought with them, they had a purpose for. So if you're going to be eating a chicken, does that mean that you're going to throw all the feathers away? No. What would they use the feathers for? They would use them for stuffing, for pillows, for quilts, whatever the case may be. Nothing on that Oregon Trail went to waste. Okay? So it was usually cows, it was always dogs, and a lot of chickens on board the wagons as well. Now, once they were on the trail, a lot of these original pioneers, they encountered a lot of different type of animal life. And because the original Oregon Trail, it uh, traversed a lot of the original uh, rivers, because there were rivers, they had access to a lot of different types of uh, animals as well. And one of the prime animals that a lot of the pioneers encountered and would go hunting for is a black bear. Now, why would a black bear be such an important animal uh, to go hunting for? What do you get from a black bear? You get the meat, right? That's a lot of meat coming out of that bear. The hide. If you shot a black bear, it was like money in the bank. Because there were a lot of trappers, traders, Native Americans that would be more than happy to trade for a black bear pelt. So if you had a black bear pelt on board, that means that you basically had a credit card and you could use it for anything that your family needed along the Oregon Trail. Now the Native Americans, they're like the pioneers. They didn't let anything go to waste. So if a pioneering family did encounter a Native American family, they could also trade the bear claws, the bear teeth, the bear skulls, and the Native Americans would use all those different parts and pieces for their ceremonial implements too. So none of this animal ever went to waste. So a bear was always a perfect choice of an animal for a pioneer to go hunting for. Okay? Another one that they encountered quite often, because uh, of all the rivers out there, they had access to a lot of fish. We're talking salmon, trout, and if you were a pioneer and you happened to go fishing, not only did that mean that you had instant food for that night, but you could preserve that meat fairly easily too. They could make jerky out of it, they could also smoke the fish, and then they could uh, store it on board the, the covered wagon for the rest of the journey. So fish were always a good choice of animal too. And this is kind of a weird one, but uh, I read this one in a journal not too long ago. What do you think those pioneer women would use the fish bones for? Think of fish ribs. Needles, hair things. Needles, hair accessories, you can bet. Yeah. They had Pinterest even back then, right? <laughs> Pretty important stuff. Another type of animal that they encountered out there was this little booger. And he looks like a gopher, but he's not. Anybody know what he's called? Prairie dog. Prairie dog, right.